I'm Carolyn Priester Jones. Welcome back to the Garden of Eden. For the past few episodes, we've been observing Earth's first human couple, Adam and Eve, in the Garden of Eden. But we also discovered there was another being in the garden with them, and he was not a nice guy. He was called by a variety of names over time, Satan, the Devil, the Accuser, the Deceiver, and he deceived Adam and Eve. He tricked them into doing the one thing God told them not to do. They ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and it almost killed them. Not only did it affect them physically, but it affected them emotionally and spiritually. They felt fear, anxiety. They felt confused. They felt ashamed. Things they had never felt before. And then, where we left off last time, they heard God in the garden, and they were afraid, very afraid. They heard God ask them one question, where are you? Now, in our last video, I asked you to consider that question for yourself. Where are you? You know, it's always good to tell God the truth because he knows already. And so Adam did tell God the truth as he understood it. You know, God and Jesus both have interesting ways of answering questions by asking a question. Why is that? Oh, there's a question. Well, he wants us to realize what we may already know. God has planted information inside of us. And so when he asks us questions, lots of times it's to call forth what was already there. And sometimes we'll discover that God already revealed it to us. But God is like a parent who says, what did I tell you about? Now, do parents say that because they don't remember and they need their child to tell them? No, the parent remembers, but they want to call forth that information in their child. Let's listen in on the conversation between God and Adam and Eve. We can learn a lot of valuable lessons. Now, in answer to God's question of where are you, Adam answered. And actually, Adam just sort of gushed forth with a rather insightful answer. He said, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. So, I hid. Well, Adam actually had some knowledge there. Let's do a little dissecting of what Adam said. What prompted Adam to take note of his situation? He heard God. How did he feel when he heard God? He was afraid. Oh, wait, stop there and think. Is God the one who wants us to feel afraid? Well, not really. He spent all kinds of time all the way through the Bible saying, don't be afraid. So it was not likely God that caused Adam to be afraid. But who does cause us to be afraid? Satan, that's right. Satan is the one who prompts fear. Now, why did Adam think that he was afraid? He said he realized he was naked. Now, why is that a problem? Isn't that the way God created him? Yes, it was. But sometimes we go through life and we really think God doesn't know what we're doing. We don't realize that he is with us for every single second of our life. And so when we have that moment of realization that he knows, that he knows every place we've been, he knows everything we've done, then we feel naked. We feel 
exposed. And so Adam said yes. He felt naked and he tried to hide. Now that's impossible, but he gave it a shot. Now God asked a couple of other questions. Two questions. Number one, who told you you were naked? Now notice God didn't say anything about the fact that he created them that way. He didn't say anything about being ashamed of his work. He didn't make Adam feel any worse by saying, why did you cover up my masterpiece? He simply wanted Adam to think about who gave him that information that was making him feel so miserable. Who contributed to that misery? Well, when we're miserable, God wants us to consider how we got that way. Now, he doesn't want us to go back and walk every step through hell. Satan is very good about tempting people to do that. He lures many people into giving their testimony where people go back and they visit every place they've been and talk about how bad it was. Now, if you hear a testimony that's about 50 minutes of a tour of hell and about five minutes of, and oh, by the way, Jesus saved me, then ask yourself whether that is truly a testimony to the glory of God. God, in fact, doesn't want us to go back through all that mess again. Aren't you glad? Well, why does Satan want us to regurgitate all that stuff again? Because he gets to accuse us and shame us all over again. And when we go over our sins, he's better able to convince us that that's just how we are. That's who we are. He wants us to feel guilty, ashamed, and exposed. He wants us to wonder how in the world God could ever take us back when we were that bad. And we may think that if God took us back, the only way we can sort of pay the price is by letting everyone know how bad we were. Satan would like us to believe that we are still unclean and sort of like the lepers in the Bible. We need to go around yelling, unclean, unclean, so that everybody knows. The other benefit to Satan is, if everybody knows where you've been, then Satan very easily can lure other people into going, ah, you're never gonna change. The first time you make a mistake, it's a slam dunk on Satan's side. Now, let's pause for a brief fact check. Does God want you to remember your sins? Well, fact checking from Hebrews 8:12, where Paul quotes God. God said, for I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Now, if God doesn't remember our sins, why would he want us to remember them? Well, Satan wants us to make at least one or two missteps going back for the reasons that we already talked about. But also, remember, Satan's goal is to sort of get us confused about what's good and what's bad and to get stuck somewhere in between. So somewhere in the retelling of all this, the good bad times, the good old bad times, seem to become a little fuzzy. Were they good or were they bad? So Satan can easily say, don't you miss your bar buddies? What would it hurt if you just had one drink a week? Then you could see the old folks back at the bar. Or what about if you just had an affair once a year. Same time next year? What would be so bad with that? Well, that's Satan's lines. What about God? 
Does he want us to look back at all? Well, what he wants for us is what he demonstrated with Adam and Eve. He wants us to stop and look at where we are. He wants us to be able to answer, where are you? And he wants us to consider how we got there. Where did we make the wrong turn? Now remember, he doesn't want you to go all the way back and figure it out that way. But he wants you to stop and think, where did I get off God's path? Now, he also wants us to know he has been with us from the beginning. He never took back his gift of free choice. We could still choose. And he was there with us. Even when we made the choices he didn't want us to make, he was there. He's been with us all along, and he is with us now. God is with you this second letting you have free choice. But he wants you to make the right choice. So look back just long enough to consider where did you make that wrong turn. Consider who lured you off the path. Now, one thing to know, no matter whose human face comes to mind, you can bet that Satan was working in the background. So don't get hung up on a person lured you off the way. Know that Satan may have worked through a person, but Satan was the one in the background. So the question to you, who did you listen to? Who told you? Now, take a moment and consider any troublesome spots in your life and let God question you. God's next question for Adam was, have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? Now notice that's just a simple yes and no question. God's not accusing. God's not condemning. God's not yelling. He's simply asking, what did I say? What is the truth? Did you do what I specifically told you not to do? Now let's take a moment and consider the truth. Look back on the road that you've traveled and where you ended up. God's last question gets at the truth of how you made that wrong turn. The question gets at what is the truth? Did you do what I asked you to do in this life? Or did you do what I told you not to do? Now, what if you look back and you can honestly say, I never heard God say anything. I guess I thought that if he didn't want me to do something, he'd stop me. But quite honestly, I never heard him say anything. Well, there are a lot of people like that. I was that way for a part of my life. It was a revelation to me that God was there. And so perhaps you never realized that you could actually call to him and he would answer you. That's exactly what he said in the Bible. Call to me and I will answer you. So, if you didn't know at the time you made the wrong turn, you could call to him. The good news is you can do that right now. Take a few minutes and consider your life. Look back and think about the places that you now know were a wrong turn. You wish you could go back and you had never gone that way. So, think of those places and call to God. Ask him, if I had heard you when I was at that point in my life, what were you telling me? If I had called to you and I had heard you, what were you saying? And so go back and learn from those things directly from God. You know, we're usually the ones 
with questions for God, just like that. But take some time, Neil, and let God question you. You see, that's what was happening in the Garden of Eden. As God was talking to Adam, he was the one asking the questions. Now, God won't interrogate you. He will just simply, gently open your heart, your mind, your spirit to see him there in love. That's what you're going to see, that he's there in love that he is going to be saying something else that was recorded in the Bible, which is you will hear a voice behind you saying, walk this way. This is the way. Walk in it. So let him open your heart. Let you see what is inside of you. What you're going to find out is He's willing right now to put his arms around you and say, now, let's walk together. Let me show you the right way to go. Take some time and think about that this week. I'm Carolyn Priester-Jones, and I'm looking forward to meeting you right back here in the Garden of Eden next time, where we're going to hear the rest of that conversation between God and Adam and Eve. If you'd like more information about this video series, my books, my blog, my tweets, then please feel free to explore our website at www.christianreading.com slash cjones. I'm looking forward to seeing you right here next time.